Welcome to the fame at the Rustic in Dallas. I'm your host, Tony Banks. I'm hanging out with my sidekicks. Do everything wide receiver Dwayne Harris. Defensive end, George Selby. Man, we just beat the Super Bowl champs. Soon you be our sidekick. That's true, that's true. You don't like that sidekick term. No, I'll be a I sidekick don't. when it comes to food, because you always eating. But I'm the only one at the table with a Super Bowl championship, Dwayne. It's just put away for safekeeping. I was just coming, Tony. I was just coming. I believe it, Dwayne. Yours is coming. Five and one on top of the NFC East. We're also going to have a conversation with three-time Super Bowl champ Dixon Edwards. Author Brian Cuban is in the house. The fame starts right now. The fame. More than just the game. Tony, Lindsay, George, and Dwayne. Big names. Fun and games. Never the same. Welcome to the fame. Welcome to the fame at the Rustic. I'm your host, Tony Banks. Got a great show for you tonight. Everybody's reeling about the big Cowboys win over the defending Super Bowl champions. Yes, sir. So without further ado, we're going to welcome in my co-host, one of my co-hosts after this big victory, defensive end George Selby. Everybody give George a round of applause. Oh, these guys take a while to come up the stairs. They like to make an entrance. Big George, how's it going, man? Everything's going good, man. Yes, sir, it Victory is going Monday. well. Yes. Five and one. How's that feel? After beating the defending Super Bowl champions, got your sack of Russell Wilson, very hard yes, guy to yes, bring yes, down. Yes. Only sack of the evening, big play. Yeah, um, it's a great feeling to go up there to Seattle. They were at 19 and one. Not in 19 and 2 because we went up there and beat them at home. So it's a great feeling to go up there and beat the Super Bowl champions. And um, it gives us a lot of confidence, and we just got to keep it going. Yeah. <laughs> so hard to win on the road, especially a team like that that really travels well because they run the ball, play good defense. They're not built on gimmicks. But you guys have turned into almost the new Seattle Seahawks with a different kind of beast on offense. Now, we, we seem to be talking defense every week because you guys are balling out of control. I know we talked about this off stage. What's, uh, as a defensive unit, what are you guys most proud of what you're doing right now? Um, we just, we're just playing team defense all the way around. You know, the second day was getting the, um, the front um, time to rush and get out the quarterback. You know, we're getting some pressure, letting them get some, make some plays back there too. So everything's just working, uh, working together. And our linebackers are running around. And you see how fast they get to the ball, yeah. break to the ball. It, it's been incredible. Yeah, and, and you're always talking about your eyes and alignment. It, it seems like, uh, especially on that second level, mm -hmm. you guys are rushing the passer. That second mm -hmm. and third level really has their eyes in the right place, mm -hmm. really playing that great team defense. Also really situational. I was breaking down some stats. And as far as when you guys force teams to pass on third down, you guys are one of the top defenses in the league. That's got to be something to be proud of oh yeah you, you want to be a great third down defense that means that you're getting um everybody you're getting the offense off the field so with that that type of stat you want to be proud of that and i'm, I'm really proud of it in, in my experience the key to being successful on third down is having success on first and second down yeah. making that third down a little longer than five yeah. yards you guys are doing that right now yeah um you know we've been making some tackles for losses or no for no gains our, our defense is swarming right now so with that no, everybody getting to the ball. We've been putting them in some great situations. Ourselves in some great situations on third downs. Well, congratulations, G Money. Thank now, you. because you guys are balling in the top of the NFC East, we got two co-hosts tonight. And we're going to welcome Mr. Do Everything wide receiver, Dwayne Harris. Let's welcome him in. See how long it takes him. Look at the swag, swag. Swag galore, look at him. I swag, man. You sure. too big to have swag, man. Hey, somebody on the football, <laughs> one of their players told me I look like a throwback football player from the, like, 70s. Today. Well, your favorite player is Trace Armstrong. Talked yeah, about that. But, uh, yeah, I thought he had a little swag, <laughs> but it was, it was sad to hear that. So I'm out there swagless right now. Yeah, you ain't got swag no, no, no swag. No swag. It's okay. It's uh, okay. It's cool. I got you. Share my swag with you. We teammates. <laughs> we got enough to go around. We got two offensive guys. Uh, surrounding a non a non swagger defensive guy. Exactly. That's how we're doing it up here yeah, tonight. That's exactly how we do it. Now, Dwayne, also, congrats on the big win. You see your Cowboy fans out here come to support you tonight. Now, all of us Cowboy fans love to see when the ball's in your hands. You seem to do something dynamic with it most times. But there was a time this past weekend, you know, something I got a little experience in. 
where you put the ball on the ground. Could have been costly. It wasn't. What's going through your mind? Do you feel like the, the only man on the field when you put the ball on the ground? Of course. You know, uh, it's a hard job. You know, everybody thinks catching punts is easy. <laughs> it's definitely not easy. Um, it's definitely the most pressure position you could be in at all the times. The ball's coming at you, and you don't only got it back there. So you got to catch it, or nobody else is going to catch it. And, and as far as football goes now, with all the new rules, it's the most violent part of the game. It's always been violent, but kickoffs, when they weren't going 12 yards out the end zone, used to be violent too. So really one of the few old school parts of the game, the punt game, which you seem to excel at, other than drop, putting the ball on the ground. You know I got to bring that up because I set records for fumbles. I know you didn't know that. That's true. You was always throwing the ball to the other team. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't throw that many ITs, but I had my share, no doubt. Now... There's been a little rivalry this week. I think, what was it, last week where we had Nick Hayden on and uh, South Florida had played Wisconsin and took an L. <laughs> and oh, yeah. you guys played some of East Carolina. And uh, that, didn't you go to East Carolina? Oh, play? I did go to East Carolina. You know that and refresh my memory, who won that game? Oh, of course you know who won that game. The Pirates. Man, uh, it was a close game. It, it was, was not a close game. We played so well game. in the first half. Then I don't know. I didn't get to watch the second half, so I think that like kind of jinxed them to losing. But is that what it was? You're, yeah. the, you're was, the good luck. I'm guy? a good luck charm, man. Ah. When we was there. We won some games. When I was there, we it was won. 28-17. Well, we, How was that close? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> moving on. Minor details. Well, we're not moving on. Actually, <laughs> we've decided that the loser. We did had to do their favorite dance here on stage. So the South yes. Florida guy, you know, whether you want to twerk it or nay-nay or something, you know, give me something. Even J.J. Watt uh, dances. I don't remember. I got no swag. I don't dance like that. Oh, well, you got a chance well, to get so, some swag so, 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 right now. So it's a sack dance. So it's a sack dance. So it's a sack dance. Where the music at? Oh, cue the music, please. <laughs> Give him a round of applause. <laughs> Get him up. How you say strip? Give me the cha cha slide or something. I can do yeah. that. Like, Get a hokey pokey. Oh, oh, yeah. The two step. Oh. 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 Nice. Well, after that, I'm going to need to take a beer break. And we're going to have <laughs> Beer 101 uh, coming up next with Benny Keith Beverages. Make sure to stay tuned and get your tickets at thefametv.com. Come back to the Rustic for food, beer, and fans. Let's do it. We'll be right back with more of The Fame. Bob Lavelle here for Home Marketing Services. My ex-wife, born and bred right here in Dallas, has taught me a lot about Texas. She's always saying, bless your heart when bad things happen to people. Took me about 12 years to figure it out. Smashed my thumb hammering a nail one day, and there she was. Bless your heart. That's when I realized what it really meant is you dumb <laughs> Which brings me to my point. Still renting, making the landlord richer, but would rather own your own home and still haven't called HMS. Well, bless your heart. The Fame is sponsored by the Webster Law Firm, your personal injury legal advisors. USA, a real town built by Bud Light, is somewhere in this area here. Why the secrecy? Because if we divulge the exact whereabouts, this amazing town will be overrun by a wave of humanity demanding to do this, 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 a whole lot of this, and tons of this for three straight days. We can't have that yet. You're probably hearing about Bud Light's Whatever USA right now from people here, 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 and... Oh, that's a little scary. Find out what's happening at upforwhatever.com. Your Beer 101 moment brought to you by Ben E. Keith Beverages. Welcome back to the fame. I'm your host, Tony Banks, and I'm sitting here at the Rustic wondering what goes well with this Franconia beer. Well, funny you ask that, Tony Banks. I'm Sean Sullivan with Ben E. Keith, and I can explain that to you right now. Please do. Now, first, tell me a little something about the beer. 
Okay, the beer itself is from uh, Franconia Brewing, uh, one of the older breweries that have been around in the Metroplex from McKinney, Texas. Mm -hmm. um, they all brew their beer uh, with just four main ingredients, water, yeast, hops, and malt. And the easiest about this one is the Franconia Kolsch, very easy drinking, very light, very approachable. It goes very well with light foods. Is, and is that what you have here? That's Looks exactly like right. Obviously, from my physique, I go with lighter foods most <laughs> of the time. So I've gone with the Roma grilled romaine salad with the uh, apple cider vinaigrette. It pairs very well. Ah, nice. Uh, now, show me the proper way to pour a beer in a glass so I don't have all the foam on top. I, I thought you'd you never ask. It's impressive. So start out like this. Pour down the side of the glass slowly. And as you fill it up, tilt it, go down the middle. Make sure you get the last drop. Mm. Drop I'm a it, natural. Drop it and drink. Best way it goes. Best way. Cheers. Cheers to you, Tony Banks. Thanks for that great beer 101. A lot more to come on the fame up next. Thank you. Your Beer 101 moment was brought to you by Ben E. Keith Beverages. This is Alex. We saw him holding Bud Light, which means he's up for whatever happens. So we surprised him with a new Buccaneers-themed living room. Alex, come and check this out. Hey, man. You like it? Yeah. Alex! Hey! What the one number one Buck fan? I am. I love it. Come with me. Come on, Alex! Look at my backyard! This is crazy! Wow! That's what I'm talking about! I wanna fight again! Yeah, yeah. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Bob Lavelle for HMS. Now, I know a lot of you are really tired of seeing my face on TV talking about getting out of the rent race and stop making the landlord richer. And by now, you know that HMS helps people find a great home and the perfect mortgage all under one roof. Just wanted you to know that I did try to get someone else to do a spot for HMS, but he was tied up. So I don't always buy houses, but when I do, I use HMS. Call HMS. Welcome back to the fame. Welcome back to the fame at the Rustic. I'm your host, Tony Banks. Still hanging out with my boys, co-host Wayne Harris, George Selby. Now, recently, after a few big wins, ESPN and everybody's jumping on the cowboy bandwagon. Now, you guys are going from basically the hunter to the hunted. Is there a preference when you guys are preparing? What type of mentality do you like better, the hunter or the hunted, George? I will say being the hunted. No, I like being on top, you know, so winning. I like winning, so I, I want to be the hunter. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. We were wondering. <laughs> Dwayne, same question. Um, definitely the hunter. You know, when you're on top, I think everybody's trying to take you off the top, so you got to come with your A-game every week. Our next guest, he's a lawyer, he's an activist, he's an author. Please welcome Shattered Images author, Brian Cuban to the stage. See how much quicker he got to the stage? He's prima donnas I got to work with over here. <laughs> Not you, Brian. Am I, am I in trouble if I say I'm a Steelers fan? Ooh. Uh, Not today, no. you're not. No. <laughs> nah, not it's really. Monday for us. <laughs> we, don't, we don't play the Steelers, so. Yeah. Why would so you want to Born and that? raised in Pittsburgh. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Hey, we got to have our allegiances to somewhere, right? Yeah. Um, now, yeah, you've had a lot of great things going on also. You're a big Mavs fan, obviously, if you didn't know. Mark Cuban, uh, his brother, happens to own the Mavericks, and we'll get into that a little later. But tell us a little bit about some of the inspiring work you've been doing with your new book and, and, and being an activist for body images for everyone across the country. Sure. Well, I, I wrote a book about uh, recovering from uh, drug addiction and eating disorders. Uh, to give you a little bit of a history, there it is, Shattered Image. I was an alcoholic by 21 a drug addict by 27, a steroid addict by 30. Uh, I, I was bulimic for 25 years. Yes, guys, do get eating disorders. Yeah. And as all the guys go, whoa, yeah, it's not <laughs> contagious. <laughs> and, uh, and I was suicidal by 45, and I was able to overcome all that. And I decided to write a book about it. And now I travel the country speaking to college students about how to overcome addiction and how to love their bodies and whether they're men or women and to love themselves well, so they don't go through what I went through. It's such a huge issue. Now your journey is obviously a tough journey but now you've come full circle and I've read some of the uh, captions and I haven't read the whole thing but read some, uh, skimmed through it a little bit and you provide some comic relief for an easy read. I do, I do. I mean, I, it's that you, when you've been through something like that, you have to look back on it and see the humor in it as part of your recovery. 
I mean, when I talk to kids, I'll throw in, you know, well, I've also been married three times. One more and I get a free set of steak knives. <laughs> you have to turn it into something positive because you can't look back and just dwell on a black hole that was your life. And I get so impassioned about letting kids know, especially high school and college, that you can experience bad times and you can experience negative body image, but you can pull yourself out of it. And what I try to teach them is something I call Eve. I teach them empathy. You know, when this goes to bullying, I was bullied severely in a high school over my weight. I was a heavy kid. And we teach our kids empathy. We have to teach our kids to have empathy for those who are different from us and stand up for those who are different from us. Definitely. We have to educate our kids on what it is to have good body image. We have to empower them to speak up for others, and we have to give them voice to do the same. So they won't, you know, so when they see kids getting bullied over their weight, they'll say that's not right and stand up for them. A negative body image can relate to back to so many different things. There's a saying that genetics loads the gun, environment pulls the trigger. Yeah. So people can be, people can grow up having predispositions to eating disorders, to addiction, to negative body image, and go through a number of different things in life that could be, that could trigger them, different environmental triggers. What a lot of people don't know is we, we associate eating disorders with women. Right. I mean, we just do. That's the conversation. But 30% of all those who suffer from eating disorders are, in fact, men. Wow, that's a Men just don't want to talk about it. It's a staggering number. I, I'll, take your, I'll take your word for it. Your brother obviously owns the math, so you got to... <laughs> <laughs> I wore my good luck ring. You're elite. There you go. Those guys, these guys right here know nothing about what a world champion ring looks like. Watch, watch it, Tony. Watch it. <laughs> well, tell us what you think about the Mavs this year. You got Tyson Chandler I'm really back. excited. You got Chandler now, Parsons, a little heavy, but he's here too. Now, well, now that we're past Chubby Gate, yeah, I, I'm really excited about the season. Uh, Chubby Gate. I think Chandler's going to take it to a, a whole new level. I think Tyson's going to be, you know, the same guy he was when he was with us. And I'm expecting, uh, you know, a top four seat. Yeah. Oh, top four seed. I like it. You can join us again and talk Mavs again. When Anytime. we come back, we're going to have That's Just Rude. Also going to have three-time Super Bowl champ Dixon Edwards. We'll be right back with more of the fame. Bob Lavelle for Home Marketing Services, reminding you that HMS offers many types of homes and has a preferred lender. For a new home on the golf course, you could use a pair of these. If you want to live next to a park, a pair of these would be nice, or these. But if you're still renting for lack of courage to call HMS, then a pair of these might help. They're brass. So whatever your housing or mortgage needs, bless your heart, get a pair, call HMS today. Call HMS. Welcome back to the fame at the Rustic. I'm your host, Tony Banks, along with George Silva and Dwayne Harris. Been talking a lot of cowboys today. Now, this is a segment that I like to call That's Just Rude. This week, we're going to talk about Colin Kaepernick. Everybody has heard of the San Francisco 49er quarterback, right? So he has been fined $10,000 by the NFL for wearing his Beats by Dre headphones coming out to warm up for a game. Now, in my opinion, that's just rude. I know the NFL has a... Uh, a, a contract with bowls, but that's just rude, gentlemen. Just what you're preparing, putting on your head, your earphones. Now we got to wear the same headphones. Yeah, I think that's just rude, Tony. Definitely just rude. I feel like if you're gonna warm up, I feel like you should be able to warm up what you want to warm up to. 
Unless they're going to give me some free boss, boss for headphones. I'm all, with, I'm all yeah. for it. I, I'm down for free headphones. <laughs> I'm down with yeah. free headphones, too. Free headphones. Then when y'all I'm get good, a couple pairs, y'all slide one over here at the bank. I will, whatever yeah. they want me to if it's free. <laughs> <laughs> right? But you guys aren't, that's not in your locker when you guys are showing up, huh? No, definitely not. They, yeah. make, they make us go out and yeah. buy boss headphones, then mm -hmm. they want us to wear them on the field. There you go. That's just rude. Just rude. If you ask me. Now I'm going to invite a former cowboy from the past, ghost from the past, blast from the past, another Spartan dog, just in case you're a wonder, from Michigan State. Three-time Super Bowl champion, Dixon Edwards, linebacker in the house. Come on out, Dix. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> I always like to talk trash to, to Dixon because he got that good hairline. You know me, I'm always yeah, going to get I'm some hairline jokes in. I'm trying to hold on to it. It's starting now. You know, I take, take purple hair if it grew purple if I just had a hairline. <laughs> Shoot, I need some Vaseline today. <laughs> <laughs> that looked like George when he was trying to write his tip with his left hand. <laughs> Y'all get off me, bro. <laughs> now, Dix. Yeah. Uh, I know uh, we talk on occasion, uh, but we don't really get to talk about the Cowboys being 5-1 and one and being one of the best teams in the NFL again. Yeah, I predicted them to win the last two games. Yeah, matter of fact, man, when we were sitting, sitting over there, I tell you, the last two games I thought they were going to win. I didn't think they were going to do what they did to New Orleans, though, but, you know, I, I, I think they have a great team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, now, uh, now, when you see the defense, uh, you know, they, they talk about us a bunch of other than George Selvey, a bunch of no-name guys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, what, I, what do you I'm see out with there? That. What do you see out there that's familiar to you? Is there anything that, that reminds you of the defenses of your past? Yeah, I, when I was talking to someone over there before, you know, it, you could just feel that the team is a very successful team. The, the defense, they have a swagger. I was a little concerned the first game in, in the 49ers that when they scored, you know, they looked kind of down. But ever since then, they, they've been very, very positive. Yeah. And I know they're doing it some scheme-wise, but the guys are rallying to the ball, like you're saying. And, uh, yeah. and, and Dixon, uh, what do you think uh, when, you, when you hear the criticism? You've been here in Dallas longer yeah. than me. Yeah. And you hear the criticism about Dwayne's boy, Tony Romo, and then he's able to actually get back at the fans a little bit yeah. after that win, especially in New Orleans. Got the jab, the, the Oh, yeah, he got blasted. Bit. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. got blasted. I, uh, Tony Romo's coming around. He's, it, I think the biggest thing that they're doing is they're actually introducing the running game. They're actually doing so the teams don't really know exactly what they're going to be doing. It, the running game is positive, very positive. So yeah, that you know, balance is key, right, George? Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's something you guys are seeing. If you're not looking at the pictures on, uh, of the other team's offense, you guys are out there seeing that, that offense really be physical, right? You, you, yeah, they, um, with them running the ball, they keep us off the field and keep us fresh, so we love that. Yeah, speaking of that, uh, Dwayne, uh, the, you guys were on the field, what, 38 minutes? Long time. Yeah, 22 minutes for, the, for Russell Wilson and company. How'd that make you feel of your defense? Oh, that makes me feel good. We keeping them off the field and we staying on the field. As long as we got the ball, they can't score. <laughs> so, True. so yeah, it's, it's, it's good for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would have to say he, he's one of my favorite players on the team, man. No, I mean, I'm, not, I'm playing, I'm being for real, though. There you, you know go. what I'm saying? Matter of yeah. fact, you know, I, I think it would be a tight free safety. I mean, I ought to have you back to just, just <sighs> grabbing balls, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> We've tried that once in college, didn't work out that well. Oh, did it? <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. just like quarterbacks when they're trying to turn Tim Tebow into a fullback. You know, receivers, they're not going to tackle nobody. Yeah, I mean, but he's always on the field. He's on all the special teams. I'm like, uh, as important as he is, I mean, how many guys, you know, like that are, are running down the field tackling, a ball, you know, a guy? You know what I'm saying? Most teams can't risk that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, he, yeah, he's down there busting his butt, get, getting, it, getting it done. Yeah, yeah, I do all the dirty work. Yeah. I, I block. I got to do all the hard, hard blocking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's terrible. All that dirty work, huh? But you run that thing with some aggression. So you maybe maybe I'm assuming you wouldn't tackle. Maybe you would. I, I mean, I don't know. What would you think, George? You think you tackle anybody? Yeah, that's what I'm talking to a few people, but I don't know about dirty work. I do all the dirty work you all day. You do all the dirty work. <laughs> all the dirty work for linebackers to come free and make all the plays. What do you think's going on uh, with these guys being a hunter to the hunted now? Yeah, you know, what's, what's so funny is that after I, I got done playing and, you know, the competition with all the guys, you know, I found out throughout the league uh, the reason why uh, everybody hunted Dallas Cowboys is because everybody wanted to be a Dallas Cowboy. They were on different teams. I mean, you're always trying to go after the Cowboys, for real. I mean, it's, it's true. You know, they'll, they'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll wrap up another edition of the Fame. Thanks, gentlemen, George, Dwayne, Dixon, for coming out. Yeah, you're welcome.
Again, come back next week when we're celebrating a big win over the NFC East New York Giants. A few sacks on uh, Mr. Eli Manning the other day. I think you're going to get a couple more there, Mr. Selby. Thanks so. again for coming. Don't forget to watch it Saturday mornings, TXA 21, 8.30 a.m. We'll see you next Monday. How about them, Cowboys? Now welcoming Emily May from Susan G. Coleman. Give her a round of applause, please. Come on over here, Miss Emily. Now tell us a little something about what we got going on here today. What are we doing with this uh, Susan G. Coleman and these jerseys? Okay, well, for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, as you guys all know, the Cowboys had their pink game, not this last game, but the game before, and they have generously offered to auction off their jersey, and 100% of the proceeds are going back to Susan G. Komen. And what those proceeds are gonna do is they're gonna go right back into the local community and pro help provide breast services all the way from education, diagnostic, and treatment to under and uninsured women in Dallas County. Nice, uh, now keep in mind, folks, it's not just enough to wear your pink, like me. We gotta get involved, huh? donate a little money, donate a little time. Now, is it common for you to, to get jerseys that have actually been worn in games? It's not that common, so this is a really great offering and we really appreciate everything that they're doing for us. Everything from the game all the way to these jerseys, it's a huge deal for us and we actually have Cowboys at Belk doing a registration rally for our race that's this Saturday as well. So the Cowboys are a huge partner for us this year and we really appreciate everything they're doing. Well, let's start the, the bidding off. We'll start both jerseys off at $100. Uh -huh. Just so you oh, hold know. up your cards if you want. I see 100, I see 100. How about 200? It's an in-game jersey. I see 200, I see 200. Can I get uh, 250? Oh, I see 250. I see 300, can I see 300? Oh, two 300s. 350, I see a 350. Can I get a full easy? 400 right there. Signed game jerseys. We got one for 400. Do we have another one for 400? Sold to 111 and 136 for four million dollars. Look at that. Now, Emily, I said help, but then I just took over, huh? I didn't even allow you to do anything. That's okay. I've never done an option. <laughs> Me neither. Just Me like neither. Tony. Well, thanks again, Miss Emily. Let's give her a round of applause. 100% of the proceeds going to Susan G. Coleman. Not 90, not 70, 100%.